Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Very glad you're here. Good to see you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, welcome to the place, a comfy, quiet little corner of the internet where we do a little drinking and a little thinking. And I'm uh, sipping on some barley tea right now, which, uh, let me tell you, is a fantastic way to get into the weekend. <laughs> it is tasty. But um, yeah, bring whatever you got, whatever it may be. Doesn't matter. I won't judge. As long as you're having a good time and you're enjoying what you drink. I think that's the most important thing, right? Well, just wanted to share an article with you all um, talking about homelessness. And as you know, I live in California, uh, pretty close to the Bay Area. So we have a lot of homeless people. I mean, Bay Area has just so many of them. Huge tent cities everywhere. And here where I am, uh, Solano County, it's pretty much Bay Area. I mean, we touch the water and we have a lot of homeless people. Now, some people on the left, uh, they want to think that, you know, homeless people are just people down on their luck. Um, they're people that, you know, lost their jobs or having a hard time. Families got kicked out because of greedy landlords. I'm using my air quotes here. Greedy landlords or, or whatever. You know, they're, they're just, they're on the streets and it's not their fault is basically what it sums up, uh, boils down to. And is that true? You know, I mean... Let's ask ourselves, is this true? Um, I can just tell you right now, my eyes tell me a different story. And uh, funny enough, I was browsing the Los Angeles Times, uh, which I'm going to pull up right here. And I found this article, which, uh, which I found very interesting, and I will share it with you. The title of which reads, Are many homeless people in L.A. mentally ill? New findings back the public's perception. Hmm, imagine that. Backs the public's perception. So what you're saying, Los Angeles Times, is that my eyes were, uh, were telling me the truth, rather than what um, certain talking heads in the media or on Reddit were telling me. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> well, that about sums it up. So uh, yeah, uh, that's all we need, the title. So take care, everyone. Good night. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm going to read it. It's kind of long, but uh, it's, it's good. I will link it below if you want to read it for yourself. Or you can stick around and listen to the sound of my very kind and caring voice as I read it to you. I'll admit it. I will eat my neighbors. All right. Um, are many homeless people in L.A. mentally ill? New findings back the public's perception. And the article reads as follows. Mental illness substance abuse, and physical disabilities are much more pervasive in Los Angeles County's homeless population than officials have previously reported, a Times analysis has found. The Times examined more than 4,000 questionnaires taken as part of this year's point-in-time count and found that about 76% of individuals living outside on the streets reported being or were observed to be affected by mental illness substance abuse, poor health, or a physical disability. The Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, which conducts the annual count, narrowly interpreted the data to produce much lower numbers. In its presentation of the results to elected officials earlier this year, the agency said only 29% of the homeless population had either a mental illness or substance abuse disorder and, therefore, 71% did not have a serious mental illness and or report substance use disorder. The Times, however, found that about 67% had either a mental illness or a substance abuse disorder. Individually, substance abuse affects 46% of those living on the streets, more than three times the rate previously reported, and mental illness, including post-traumatic stress disorder, affects 51% of those living on the streets, according to the analysis. And there's a cool infograph, little picture here. Um, I'm going to put it up. Uh, it says, How the Housing Authority and the Times Analysis Compare. A Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority analysis found 29% of people living on the streets reported or were observed to have a mental illness and or substance abuse disorder, and down here at the bottom, it says, the Times found 67%. So, yeah, there you go. Way to go. Once again, government numbers, people. Government numbers. All right. 
Moving on. The Homeless Services Authority did not dispute what the Times found. Rather, Heidi Marston, the agency's acting executive director, explained that its report was in a format required by federal guidelines, leading to a different interpretation of the statistics. We're acknowledging that there are more layers to the story, Marston said. Yeah, ogres got layers too, Miss Marston, and they probably smell just as bad as your reporting. Layers! Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers? You get it. We both have layers. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. The Times analysis aligns with a national study released Sunday by the California Policy Lab at UCLA, which found even higher rates in most categories. It also found that a mental health, quote, concern affected 78% of the unsheltered population and a substance abuse concern, quote, uh, 75%. The findings lend statistical support to the public's frequent association of mental illness, physical disabilities, and substance abuse with homelessness. But neither the UCLA study nor the Times analysis suggests that these disabilities and health conditions alone cause people to end up on the streets. Elected officials and researchers largely agree that California's affordable housing crisis and poverty are the primary drivers of homelessness. Rather, both the analysis and the study illuminate a population struggling with complex mental health conditions and physical disabilities that interact and grow worse as people remain outside. Both datasets found mental and physical impairments to be far more prevalent among those living on the streets than in shelters. The Times found that 50% of unsheltered people had two disabilities at the same time, and 26% had three all at once, a condition known as trimorbidity. UCLA researchers found trimorbidity in half the population they studied. The UCLA study also found that among those who had been homeless for more than three years, 92% had a physical health condition, anything from cancer to an abscess. In Los Angeles County, 75% of homeless people are unsheltered, and in 2018, the statewide rate of unsheltered homelessness was about the same. Californians living in poverty and on the edge of homelessness have been crushed by soaring rents and sky-high home prices in recent years. A 2017 study by real estate firm Zillow found that a 5% rent jump in L.A. County would leave 2,000 more residents homeless. The research at UCLA, conducted by Janie Roundtree, Nathan Hess, and Austin Like, sought to offer empirical insight into a poorly understood community, Roundtree said. The findings show a need for more attention to the physical and emotional distress of those on the street who are waiting for scarce housing opportunities. She added that housing is crucial, but it won't alone solve, quote, these very deep medical, mental health, and substance abuse issues. There really needs to be an examination of the inflow of the unsheltered population, and are there issues of access to medical care, mental health care, and to substance abuse treatment that are just as important as thinking about how to house them immediately when they do become homeless, Roundtree said. Los Angeles County's homeless initiatives, along with most initiatives across the state and the nation, emphasize what's known as a, quote, housing first strategy. The primary focus is on getting chronically homeless individuals off the streets and into permanent housing, where they can access services to address mental and physical problems. But the number of chronically homeless people in L.A. County, at nearly 17,000 as of January and growing, far exceeds the housing and shelters currently available, even the thousands of new units being built with help from the 1.2 billion Proposition HHH, Triple H, a uh, homeless housing bond won't be enough to close the gap. If being on the streets is bad for your health, then housing first would be fine if everyone was going to be housed overnight, said UCLA Associate Professor Randall Kuhn, 
who wasn't involved in the research, but said he plans to release a complementary study. In the meantime, thousands will go unsheltered for years, and thousands will enter homelessness directly to the streets. What are we supposed to do to help those people? At a time when cities and counties are struggling to respond to a growing number of street encampments, the UCLA study and the Times analysis raise questions about whether government officials are taking the right approach and doing enough for people on the street who have little hope of getting into housing anytime soon. The leaders of Governor Gavin Newsom's new homelessness task force have proposed enacting a legal right to shelter in California, which would force cities and counties to build enough shelter beds to accommodate any homeless person who seeks one. The state plan faces potential opposition, both from homeless advocates and from local officials, and lacks specifics on how the shelters would address the population's acute needs. University of Pennsylvania professor Dennis Colhane, a longtime researcher on homelessness, said that a weak social safety net that once supported Americans with disabilities has been worsening for decades, which has left more people on the streets. Most people with mental illness have a toehold in the housing market that they hang on to for dear life. But when it's shaken by this man-made market disaster, they're the ones who lose out, Colhane said. It's easier to focus on mental illness, and you think you're focusing on the problem, when really, it's something you can't see. Advocates for homeless people tend to not focus their messaging on mental illness, disabilities, or substance abuse out of concern that doing so unfairly stereotypes and stigmatizes those without a home. Briefing the Times on this year's homeless point-in-time count prior to its release, Peter Lynn, executive director of the Homeless Authority, defended the agency's statistics on homeless people with disabilities and substance abuse issues. He attributed the idea that the numbers should be higher to perception bias. Like other local and state officials, he has portrayed the homeless population as being much like the wider population of housed Angelinos. What people remember are the cases that stood out, which are the cases of behavioral anomalies, which is why, I think, people have a sense that there are more people that have serious mental illness, Lynn said. Most people with mental illness are housed. The vast majority of people with serious substance abuse issues are housed. They're using their substances in their bedrooms and in their living rooms, and you're not watching it. Speaking on behalf of Lynn, who is on medical leave, Marston said the agency reports demographic statistics in the same format as other cities around the country. They all follow guidelines set by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. But she conceded that the reports leave out data that would give a more complete picture of what's happening on L.A. County streets, including the role that trauma plays in mental illness and substance abuse. It's much deeper, and we have an opportunity to dig into that, she said. In a recent email to members of the agency's board, Chairman Sarah DeSalt, I think I'm saying that right, if I'm not, I apologize, um, proposed that the agency work with the California Policy Lab to better understand the, quote, urgent need of mental health or health services and to what extent do we need to drastically increase access to those services for those individuals in order to be able to house people. The data, she added, would help the Homeless Services Authority consider how to fund and implement shelter to home initiatives. The Times found that the agency's analysis of its demographic survey reached the lower numbers by excluding several responses related to health and mental health issues, as well as substance abuse. For example, respondents' disclosures of having serious mental illness, depression, or PTSD were counted only if they also answered a secondary question stating that it was, quote, permanent or long-term. The omission reduced the mental illness rate by 11.4 percentage points. And I got some pictures here. I'm going to put them up so you can see them, but I'm not really going to read them. You can take a look if you want. Pretty interesting. Um, yeah, we'll just get these. Okay. Moving on. 
Patricia St. Clair, a senior member of the USC data team that analyzed the findings for the Homeless Authority, said the question was used to make the answer consistent with the federal definition of chronic homelessness. That definition requires a debilitating condition of a long duration, combined with a lengthy residence on the street. She also said that omitting responses to the question was meant to screen out those who, for example, quote, had a bout of depression in adolescent years. Also, interviewers were asked to indicate if they observed a mental illness or substance abuse that was not disclosed by the respondent. Those observations were not included in the public report. If counted, they would have increased the rate of mental illness by 4.5 percentage points and substance abuse by 9 percentage points. St. Clair said responses to that question were not appropriate to use because the interviewers were not qualified to assess the symptoms of mental illness or substance abuse. Their observations were only for the purpose of weighting the responses, she said. Questions about whether a person's disability contributed to becoming homeless also were not counted and would have added three percentage points to the mental illness and 4.5 to substance abuse categories. Differences between the findings by the Times and those of UCLA could reflect potential biases in the data sources, Roundtree said. The UCLA study analyzed a national sample of almost 65,000 questionnaires used to prioritize homeless people for housing. Because disabling conditions are required to qualify, outreach workers have an incentive to find them. The Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority data, on the other hand, were collected as part of the local point-in-time count and were self-reported. As a result, respondents receive no benefit for providing sensitive information. And there you have it. The homeless have a problem with substance abuse and mental illness. Uh, a good chunk of them, the majority of them, which is something that, you know, all of us here already knew, could have already told you. Just walking down the streets, um, here downtown, uh, by the mall, my goodness, the mall is a mess. Um, we could have told you that a long time ago. These people have mental illness problems and drug abuse problems, and throwing money at them is not going to solve it. Yeah, a lot of the left... They want to think that this is just a housing problem. And to be honest, to be fair, okay, it is. That is one aspect. Housing is very expensive here, especially in California. But once again, that's a government problem. Government zoning is way too restrictive. Permit fees are way too high. I mean, depending on where you live, it can be 300 to $500 for a permit just to remodel your kitchen, just to put in a few cabinets, okay? That's what we're dealing with. Now think about a developer who's got to put in pipes and, and drywall and roofing. I mean, the, the fees are, are just terrible. And like I said, zoning, zoning's another thing. Um, something that I, I got to hit and I just got to do it. The Federal Reserve printing out money, the printing press, all the government shenanigans, Wall Street shenanigans they do, uh, it, it drives up the prices because what do these banks and, and financial institutions do? They buy up houses and then they rent it to us at jacked up prices because they got free Fed money, and we didn't. I mean, literally, that's simple. So, I know I rag on the Fed all the time, but I'm going to keep ragging on the Fed until they're dead. So, uh, the bank. The bank is dead, all right? want to kill the Fed. <laughs> anyway, um, but despite what uh, what's-his-face says, um, da -da 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 -da, Peter Lin, executive director of the Homeless Authority, uh, portrayed the homeless population as being much like the wider population of housed Angelinos. Yeah, Peter Lynn, with all due respect to your position, uh, you can shove it, <laughs> all right? You just shove it, dude. They're not like us. Now, that doesn't mean they're not human beings and deserving of love and respect. Okay, you know, the Christian inside of me, of course. I want to help these people. But what's the first step in, in solving a problem? You got to admit you have a problem. These aren't families with children. They're not dudes that got laid off at the iron worker factory, okay? They're zonked out, on drugs, in the middle of the street, sometimes on people's front lawns. I see this. 
uh, you know, the, the dude with the paper bag and the booze, and he's sleeping on the sidewalk in his own uh, filth, you know what I mean? That's what's on the street. Okay, people talking to themselves, yelling into to clouds, or, or at, you know, ghosts. I mean, it's, it's sad. It's so sad. And I, I just, I feel, uh, I just, I feel so horrible. It's, it's a terrible sight to see. It's a terrible thing to witness. Um, and we're all worse off for it. I mean, it really feels like our cities are collapsing. It feels like we're in a third world nation and, and nobody cares. And by sitting here, uh, Mr. Peter Lynn, and trying to portray these people as just average, ordinary, law-abiding citizens is not doing us any favors, okay? You're actively hurting our cities, you're hurting the cause, and you're not getting these people the help you, you, they need, um, that you need to give them, by pretending that, you know, the majority don't have a mental illness or a substance abuse problem, okay? You need to stop. This needs to stop. Lefties, you gotta stop, Okay? I want to help the homeless. I know I know you lefties do want to help the homeless. I do because I talk to you. I live in California. You guys are everywhere. But you're doing it wrong. All right? You're doing it wrong. We have to admit that most of the people have severe issues. Now, what to do? We can debate that. Um, obviously, California, if you know California's history, we actually had a lot of facilities for mentally ill people. I know, um, just a little car trip away, Napa, California, there was a facility there. I believe they closed that down. And, uh, people on the conservative side, I'm just throwing this out there, you know, Ronald Reagan is the one that did that. Just, just, hey, it's true, Ronald Reagan closed a lot of the, the facilities. But then again, you know, this, this state's been run by Democrats for decades now, and they haven't reopened them or started any new ones, so... Honestly, who's to blame here? I, I don't know. But let's honestly let's stop blaming people um, and and try to come up with a solution. You know, they need help, and we can do better than this. And that comes, like I said, from admitting that most of them are mentally ill and have drug problems. All right, everybody, lefties, righties, everybody. Okay, got this. Good. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I think that about covers it for now. Um, pretty interesting. Like I said, check it out for yourself. A lot of good numbers and statistics. So uh, if you don't live in a homeless infested area, um, honestly, just go to YouTube. Okay. Well, you're obviously here. Check out some videos. Just, just you know, look up California homeless, um, like Venice Beach or San Francisco or something, and, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Like just down the street from me, it's the same thing. I, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> You have to see it for yourself. Just down the street, there's homeless camps. So, anyway, um, yeah, I will dismount the soapbox now. Like I said, I hope you find that interesting. Hope it didn't bore you to death. But, um, really, I mean, like I said, there's homeless people everywhere. I Honestly, I want to do something about it. And I want to encourage everybody around that we can do better than this. I, I know we can. And um, if, I, if I can encourage you... You know, to, to, you know, call your representative or, or, you know, maybe come up with something yourself. You know, a good idea or a program, some non-profit thing. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'll have called it a, a podcast well done. So, um, anyway, I uh, hope you have a good week. Hope you have a good weekend. Uh, I hope you drink something very tasty in the, in the near future. <laughs> um, if you're struggling, you're having a hard time, um you know, I know things are hard. I'm talking about housing costs and everything and bills, groceries. It's hard. It's rough. I get it. I feel you. Um, yeah, reach out to somebody, please. We're in this together. We can help each other. We're stronger together. I truly believe that. So don't do it alone, all right? Uh, or let me know. You know, I can give you some thoughts and prayers at the very least, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, if you're doing well, great. Awesome. But remember the little people. Remember to help them out too, all right? Yeah, <laughs> um, that is about it, I think, so, yeah, <laughs> take care, everyone, good night.